Uh, welcome back to my Bard's Tale 3 playthrough. Um, I had some technical difficulties and a little of sorts. Uh, multiple crashes have happened and I've lost progress and therefore lost focus where I was. Um, where I last left things, we had done some mapping of the second level of the catacombs. And um, uh, explored some darkness and whatever. Um, a lot was left to do. Uh, during a crash, I went and explored a little bit and mapped it. And I don't really know where I was, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to bother to unmap it. Anyway, um, I am like around ten thousand experience away from the next level, and I've just refilled all my spell points by standing around in sunlight. And it's time to go back into the dungeon. I guess I should zoom this in more for those not on the highest resolution video. Well, I'm actually trying an experiment um, with recording at 15 frames a second. I mean, not be everyone's favorite, but there's really not a lot of motion here. So I want to see how it looks. I'll do one video this way, uh, and then watch it. If it's if it's bad, I'll just go back for the next video. Oh, because one of the crashes was actually the video recording application crashing multiple times in a row. Like, it would crash, and then I'd be like, okay, whatever. Thank you, crash reporter. And then it would be like, oh, sorry, I crashed again while trying to recover from the crash. Well, that's a refreshingly low number of encounters walking through this level. So now I'm uh, here. I plan to head uh, across the map this way. to head south, east, northeast, and explore from there. Did I get down 30 hit points just this one combat? I don't think so. Poison Needle. Okay, so my new thinking about the traps is I get one free failure. Uh, if my rogue can't handle it on the first try and I just try again mindlessly, I think it goes off even if I've got the right trap. Or can go off even if I've got the right trap. I was playing the Amiga version recently and um, right before this playthrough started. I didn't get far, and uh, it, it I could type the same thing ten times in a row and eventually succeed. It felt very strange as a game design element, but I think that's one of the bugs, is that traps there don't work reliably in a lot of contexts, and that was probably one of them. Whereas here, 
it seems like you know I put this legend down and I put it in the middle of the dungeon map look I just I was zoomed in and I didn't realize okay so you X V oh. And let's put one of these down. There's my legend. This is this is UI is really clunky about labels. Um, silence. So this is the what these markings are. Uh, This is my bad choice because they weren't it wasn't a good choice. For explosion. Okay. Um this this choice of how to do the the uh legend may not work because of the way these scale. But it's better than nothing. Okay. So I went into this end. I'm gonna turn around. Oh, <laughs> I forgot why I was. This is also a silence. And this is also a silence, so silence is all around. It's a little tedious. Okay, this is not what I expected. Or at least not what I wrote down last time. I think this is... Oh, why do you give me that crap door by default? Give me the good door. Okay, what else does Mr. Automap show me that I didn't bother to write down? like this. Is that the north edge? Oh yes it is. Okay, so I'm not totally off base. So this way, there's an anti-magic zone that will cancel my spells. I don't know whether this magic train effect continues down there, but there was nothing positive to entice me to go try again. Crazy cloud. I don't even want to try. Having half my party or all my party go insane is not not something I want to do until I get some better heal spells. Oh, I missed a detail. There's a door south here.
I need a, I need some, some sort of wall segment that will stand out better against the heavy, the heavy major lines. Okay, that's definitely an HP drain. Or here. I don't know what I'm smoking. And we're low enough now that I'm gonna do some healing song action. It's sort of amusing how the time it takes to increment those integers on the screen is less the fewer it has to do. Like it's clearly choosing to think about how to update the numbers for some of the items so that if it has fewer to update it takes less time. Not totally not totally strange, but the kind of thing you wouldn't see in a modern game. Modern hardware, it's pretty trivial to make all of those happen at once. On a Commodore, I could see it maybe being tricky, or at least take more effort. Curious what the automat looks like now. It doesn't say much more. It's like there's a vision wall where it doesn't want to help beyond a certain point, or doesn't, or can't help beyond a certain point. Okay, there's definitely another hit point drain spot. And there too. Okay. Definitely seeing a pattern here. Oh, I lied to myself with this wall. We can see far with this bell. I think that's four, one, two, three, four. I think it's four segments down. flavor text. Automap looks to have given us the right idea. And note this dark gloomy tunnel reeks of death and moldy rot. You should 
shiver to think something could live down here and you. Shiver to think you might die down here. how things fill in on that auto map. Let's go up first, or north first. Dark Priest and Miasmal Curs. I'm gonna attack the Curs. Expecting the Dark Priest won't be able to reach me from 30 feet, and the Curs will advance. The image, incidentally, always shows the closest group, or I don't know how it decides when there's two equivalently close groups. Whatever one's first on the list, really. I just don't know how it decides which one's first on the list. Probably the first one they got there, or the last one they got there. Okay, I'm going to get into casting range. Well, not for that spell. What these... Oops. I was about... I spoke... I half spoke too soon. At those damage rates, like four, I was healing faster than he was damaging me, but not for things like 13. Elf Cloak. Okay. That is more armor. <laughs> but my memory says... That is not only... Oh, I thought it was Elendor. Is it Elena? Who has the freaking elf cloak? Oh, was, I had the right person. So I think mages can wear it, but not, like, fighters and such. I don't know why they don't like elf cloaks. Yeah, can't use... Can a monk use an elf cloak? Yes. How about a bard who needs it more? Nope. Okay, only like light armored party members can use it. I mean, people who are types of armor that are light, like robes and stuff. Okay, so our monk is never going to be probably hit again.
And out of paranoia for crashes, uh, now that I have a upgrade of some note, not like really important, but some kind of upgrade, I'm saving my game. trap. Looks like this is uh, another closet. Huh, I was pretty sure I cast that correctly, or typed it correctly. Finding all these Mithra arrows makes me wish I had a place to sell things. Okay, so that was spell point, there was hit point drain, and now silence. Okay. So, this is a hit point drain. This is a silence. And there's a wall here, and over there. Oh, my focus is still on the game. Okay, um... I don't think there's easy ways to get in here without going through a lot of spell point drain, which there might be more of, but whatever. So, I'm gonna try to explore to the west. So I checked these walls and went back south. To the west there should be a wall, south there's a wall, west there's an open space. One. And I'm loading so there's some fight.
Lady Oakshield seems to be in need of more spell resistance. She's always getting hit for the high numbers. It's possible, incidentally, when you're being targeted by a spell, to have three general types of outcomes. You can um, resist the spell. You can get on your saving throw. You you save well and you resist it. That's an, that's a possibility. There's also the possibility that okay, I'm gonna. I don't want to go there because it's going to be a magic drain. I'm going to step here. Magic drain, yep. And then not magic drain. Okay. Anyway, so uh, from spells, you can you can resist them entirely. You can also sort of partially resist them. Uh, you don't. You still take damage, but only half. And then uh, you can not resist them at all and take full damage. So those are the possible outcomes. And I don't know how exactly, but when monsters try to resist your spells, uh, I don't know if they get a say in the matter. I think they do. I think some of them resist more more uh, readily than others. But um, you, you definitely, your ability definitely factors. So if you have low-level spellcasters, uh, enemies will resist them more often, and when they level up, they will be resisted less often. I don't know if there's one die roll total or two like theirs and yours, but it sort of doesn't matter because we can't tell. My rogue is attacking the Zephyr Lord. Most of the rest are attacking this wolf who does a fair amount of damage. Hop Blossom just stopped off to kill the last foul stalker. B B A B. And the rogue hides. We're doing a fair amount of damage, but we're not really making progress. B, B, A, B, attack. C, my rogue who snuck to 20 feet away. She misses, stupid rogue. B, B, A, A, hide. One wolf down, one wolf created. Oop, no. My rogue needs to attack the Zephyr Lord. Not B. A, A, B, B, C. And I'm getting tired of this, so I'm going to Spectre touch the Zephyr Lord too. Oh, although now the rogue finally does crit and gets rid of the Zephyr Lord. I feel like for that long a fight I should get more experience than that. I guess I got a harmonic gem, I should be thankful for what I get.
I was going to say, there's nothing bad in this little closet. And then there's a trap. I was surprised. And um, that's, that's not what I want. That's what I want. And this is sort of... Whoop. This is not what I expected. I didn't think there was going to be a door here. gonna be it's gonna be a spell drain but I want to see spell drain and then south and that's going to be spell drain too yep okay just one healing song and let it heal as much as it does. Sort of maximize the results. Maybe I should be fighting these solo monsters. Uh, there are new drops on this floor, or at least there are still useful drops on this floor that I don't have. Which is, I guess, the more important metric. And a solo monster can drop a chest. And a chest, I think, maybe? I don't know, in Barktail 1, single opponents had the same chance to drop useful items as large groups, but I don't know if that's true here. So this is a hit point drain square. Maybe it's some kind of arrow or something. And of course, because I got attacked on the hit point drain square, it's going to drain my hit points again when the fight's over. That flame horn is working pretty well. So I think you can see there's like things in the 20s and then things around the 11s. I think the 11 is the partial resist where he took half damage. Well, oh, time for more booze.
I just wanted to get out of that hit point drain before I thought too much. I want to figure out where that oh, the harmonic gem is right where I want it for use. I guess these are normal walls. I can tell that now. So hard to make out whether there's a wall there or not. Okay, what does auto map say? Auto map says very little. I don't already know. Oh, this is a dead end. That means I should I should explore it now. And I'm sure it's going to be a spell point drain, but I can't help myself. the firehorn on the second group? No, I'm going to use them on the first group and just double down on getting rid of them. Mostly because the phantoms, I, I don't think that firehorn goes 30 feet. attacking the phantoms because they're in range. Because I think they do a lot more damage. Firehorn back on the magic eaters. So on the bright side, I spent time in the magic drain room when I was already at zero spell points. At least on one of my mages. Oh, I haven't got any spell points. I'm going to leave this treasure chest there. I love that you got one gold. gem in the drain room, which is kind of dumb, because I thought I'd left already.
Come on, mage staff. Which I don't think drop here, but give me one anyway. Nope. Uh, is this gonna be a hit point drain? No. I feel a sense of relief. Oh, but I have an explosion, which is kind of like a hit point drain, only it triggers, I think, once only. So, explosion marker here. One, two, three. Lesser Revelation is what I just cast, and you can see it can show me one, two, three squares away. Uh, Greater Revelation can show me four squares away. That's the difference, for the most part. Also, it lasts longer. Oh, forgot to tell the map or software I went into this room. Another explosion. I don't even think you can, like, um, clear explosion. I don't think you can, like, if you know an explosion is head, I think that your choices are don't go that way, or suck it up and walk through the explosion. I think that's how it works. And here we have a silent zone. And we've come to this spot. I'm going to turn around. At this point, I'm hoping to catch up with already mapped areas over here. Um, and then leave that way. All right, my new policy of fighting single enemies. Well, it didn't give me a chest. Most things give me chests. I don't know if that was because it was a single enemy or not. If single enemies don't give chests as often, then single enemies may give less treasure in this version, in this edition, this, I don't know, game in the series. Die, you demon. There we go. You died. Mithril scale. I think Chantrell already has her mithril scale. Yeah, so I guess the remaining question is, do they let rogues wear mithril scale for some reason in March Tale 3? Two, five, the rogue, five. Yeah, they do. That is quite the upgrade from armor class 3 to armor class 0 in one step. Seems wrong somehow, but. Rogue and scale armor? Okay, now we have darkness. 
and an explosion. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I have to like be like stuck in darkness and an explosion and etc. Yeah, I'll just be like what? I always put a question mark on that that tile. I'm just gonna go forward. Why did it wait for my light to turn on to say explosion? The, ex the explosions not happen in the dark? healing song trick because people in the back are getting pretty low. So it should be six per round at this point. Oh. I I don't know, I lost track somehow. What's my 110 person do? No, I think it was... Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's 12 per round now. I feel like the enemies in this game are very unsuccessful at summoning peers. When some caster summons stuff, that pretty much always works. But when they're like, hey, hey, help me out, guys, it doesn't seem to work very well. Which is fine by me. They all want to just spend their turns asking for help and not helping. Well, I kill them and get a lot of experience points, I'm fine with that. So I think that. So, oh, look at that! I didn't know you could do that. You can press enter on the auto map, and it tells you where you've been. So theoretically, if you were able to, if, if you were so leveled as to clear a level in one visit, you could use that to verify you've been everywhere. It's sort of awkward. It's like almost really helpful, but yet not, because, you know, there's no way you're going to do that. Where be you, pit trap marker? Here's one. Well, I guess it is helpful, but it's not helpful as a mapper. It doesn't really record where you've been very effectively. I mean, it doesn't record the map effectively. It just shows you some useful information. Okay, so here is a hit point drain, which is what I expected. I'm going to turn 
Did I already turn? My compass shows me turning. Spinner? Oh, no, I... Just... Oh. There's a door here? Seems plausible. And I went twice because I thought nothing happened and whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, from here... I think we're out of the hit point drain. And I think I know the way. Although I'm going to try to do some new stuff. Wait, did I go through that door? Am I here? On which side of this door am I? I don't know. I'm hand to hand attacking these Slath Beasts. Um. I guess because they poison, I feel like I should get rid of them earlier. Also, because the larger group is more its more efficient to hit, you know, the larger group with group spells, so... For better or worse, I started with the other group. Seems to have worked out. So, in, in Bard's Tale 1, what you do in these sort of situations where you're like, I don't know if I'm here or here, you'd cast Scar Scry Sight after looking around. Here I'm kind of loath to look around because there's so many drain squares when I'm not paying attention that if I look around, I'm getting beat up. this marker. I don't actually know what's here. This is... I never went there. I get poisoned? Oh, I must have had a trap that I cursored through. I thought there was one Vile Creeper. I didn't realize there was seven. 
six, five, four, three. So that's pretty much my my trip to the catacombs. This trip, anyway. And then we get the classic way out. Zoom. Here, around there, back there, out. Um, for this, I need at least a light source or a compass. Oh, why did I cast a healing spell? I don't know. I had the wrong person cast it anyway, so it didn't work. There's my Finn's flute again. This is some loot I got last time around for crashing. And equip. It's hard to tell because that turned off a spell, uh, 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 an armor song. But it improved my bard's armor by two and gave a very slightly different um, sound to the music that she plays. Because different instruments give different set musical sounds. As we all know, even if we don't expect it from ancient 8-bit computers. At least I certainly didn't. I expected it to be the exact same sound for every instrument. I was surprised when it changed. Though not this time, because it's the second time. It's pretty, it's somewhat subtle, because um, the Commodore synthesizer that it shipped with, it's really on the same, uh, it's on the CPU. Uh, chip. If I maybe I'm wrong about that. Whatever. There, there, it's, it's calling it a synthesizer is correct, but implies more than is there. It's three voices, relatively limited set of waveform controls, but um, in the hands of some has a very distinctive sound. But. Uh, the Bard's Tale series, strangely, you know, like, the, the name of the, you know, title character, the Bard, is about music, but they, they didn't really achieve very good results with the, with the music. Especially not in the early, earlier games. Maybe it was an Apple II sort of derivation problem. You know, it's not so much how well the, dare, the bear dances. It's not so much that you have 
good that, that the music is good on the Apple II, it's that you have music at all. I don't know, at least without a mocking board. And yeah, and they didn't even support mocking boards, and it wasn't like it came out super early. This was like a 84 game or something. The Apple II had been out for seven years, and I don't know how long the mocking board had been out, like four years, something? And they just didn't support the music board. Uh, it's very That part is odd to me. Maybe because it was written by one student uh, on, his, on his own time, so he didn't have a mocking board? Something like that? Changed this song to duo time to get spell points faster. Let's see if we have the ability to level up. Uh, Grisnak. No. That's kind of funny. Close, but not there. Okay. Um, saving and ending this session here. See you.